Hey guys, what is up? Irving here, bringing you guys another episode of Sky Factory 4. Last time we made this jetpack I have on my back, and it has been oh so helpful because I have some made I have made some changes to the base. As you can see down there, it looks a lot different. So I actually want to show you that first. Alright guys, so you can see that something definitely changed. It's not how it used to be. Up here, I kind of left it the same. Haven't really made any changes. All of these now have the, the blue dirt, uh, which is nice. Uh, I moved our, our mystical agriculture farm up here, like I said I would last time. Uh, so this is still going going strong. But below is where I made most of the changes. You'll see as soon as I go down here. All right, completely different. A little bit of uh, decoration, as you can see. I kind of set it up so we have a little bit of the packagers on the right, and then we have our storage on the left. Uh, I just want to put things that I kind of just use or automate, like small things here in the middle. Right now, I have this this little th contraption here that makes obsidian. So this is a cobblestone generator which puts cobblestone in this auto clicker, which just clicks this cauldron. Yeah, I showed you guys that part. But now it extracts it and puts it into the solidifier. So I have this, uh, just this container with a bunch of sticks. And inside of here, I have a GPS marker. Uh, since I moved it, it is now pointing to the incorrect location. But if I were to click it on there and set this back in the item transfer node, we should be able to get those sticks in our solidifier. As you can see, it's filling up. And so what this is going to do, it's going to create obsidian. And this obsidian is going to be um, taken by an import cable that we have below it. And that's going to be put into our system. But then we have our just a loot fabricator. It's not connected to power yet. And then our block of coal, nothing else. We have our nuclear craft. Uh, items here and all of our mechanism ones there uh, As you can see I have a couple enders chests that just kind of bring items here. Uh, this one I believe is our 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 farm and this one right here is gonna be our mob farm All right, so since last time I've actually increased the number of, of enriching and Smelting factors that we have now we have three of each so this is gonna go a lot faster as you can see before I was having problems where it back up, it couldn't keep up with uh, how many or how much amber we were getting. But with three of them, it totally keeps up just fine. And that's kind of been doing its thing. All right, out here we have kind of an outdoorish area. I just have this running here. This isn't even connected, but uh, I haven't moved this yet. It's still there. But I've kind of uh, changed our mob farm a little bit. Not not too much, but I brought it all the way down. Added more chests to, to put things. And then I have uh, two different extraction ones. Uh, we have things that I don't want over here. So everything except this. Or, yeah. Everything except that. And here we get those items that get sent to our system. And they get stored over there. On the other side, we don't have anything except our twilight Forest cake. I don't know what happened to my nether cake and twilight cake, the, the first ones we made. But I had to craft another one, so those are there. And you can see our power area also has changed. I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff, but it looks like a mess right now, but it's fine for now. Now we only have these two generators running. And we're using either sticks or leaves, which uh, they're both full right now. When this is full, I got rid of our power cell, and instead I'm using this energy cube. And then we still have our filing cabinets on this side. But I think that's it for uh, changes on the base. Something I want to do real quick before I forget. I want to take a stack of these. Place them here. And then right click it. And I got an achievement for that. Uh, which is something we needed for Sky Factory. Alright guys. So now that I got that out of the way. Uh, the first thing I wanna, uh, the, that I want to take on is our tool here. So our Paxel is pretty close to breaking, 64 durability. And I thought we should upgrade to this Atomic Disassembler. 
All right, and in order to make this atomic disassembler, we need a refined obsidian ingot, which I don't believe we've done before, but it's very simple. You just go to the osmium compressor, have osmium, put a refined, a refined obsidian dust up top, and then you should get the refined obsidian ingot. We could now use this to craft our atomic disassembler, just like so. And again, it uses power, and it's, it's pretty sweet. So I am done using this pack, so I guess I could just check it out of the world but for now we're gonna leave it all right guys so when i was rearranging my base i was kind of left wanting for a better storage system so because of that we are going to get into applied energistics today and in order to do that we need these four different presses in order to get the different logic and uh, not the logic but the uh, yeah the different presses we need or, or circuits the different circuits we need in order to get everything up and running all right, so I like to take these first into the enriching factory and then just have them run and then it will be turned into ingots uh, inside of the smelting factory. All right, so I have smelted this into ingots and uh, what we're going to do now is that we're going to take our boron into the alloy furnace and I want to make uh, 14 of them. So I need seven boron and I will need seven steel. If you put these together, uh, you will get ferroboron. All right, now that I have ferroboron here, I'm going to take a few of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this with lithium. Lithium, I mean. And I'm going to put these also in the alloy furnace. And what this should give us is the tough alloy. All right, now that we have our different ingots that we need, uh, I already have... A molten iron in there I'm gonna put the rest of these in the smeltery so that they cook up and then what we will need is we will need to use a chisel head uh, with cobblestone and, and this will give us uh, this chisel head that we will need uh, in order to make this all right so to make the circuit mold we actually need an inscriber and which means we need the chisel head casts which means we need gold so I'm gonna grab some gold real quick uh, we just need two to make the cast and we will place this in our smeltery. And we will also craft an inscriber. So let's look up inscriber. They should be pretty simple to make. Uh, as you can see, it's just sticky pistons up top and bottom, which I guess I'll craft manually. Two sticky pistons, just like so. And we will need flux crystals, which in the way you get that is mineral with redstone. All right, so having redstone here on the left, you should be able to just put the mineral chunks and yeah, that will give you the flux crystals, uh, which that should be enough already to make an inscriber. So these do need to be powered. So I've run a fluix duct underneath our base and uh, yeah, I will just place this inscriber here. All right, all of these are now uh, molten. So we will take the gold and we will put the chisel head there and we will take our gold and pour it on it all right there we go we got the chisel head cast and i think the only thing we need is the only thing we need is cobblestone so let's grab a piece of cobblestone which i now have and we will go down below to our inscriber and go ahead and place that with the cobblestone and as you can see it is processing it all right there we go cobblestone circuit mold that is exactly what we need to pour the different materials on and it doesn't it's not consumed when you're making a mold so we only need one of them all right so now that we have them we can just have all four ready to go and i'm just gonna pour this four times all right and then we have our first one which is the silicon press that one's using the iron this one's using steel which should be the logic processor. All right, and now we have the logic press. Now the next one should be the engineering press using ferroboron. All right, this is done, and now we have our engineering press. And then the final one would be the calculation press using the tough alloy. All right, and there we go. We have all the calculation presses. Next, I will show you guys how to use them. All right, guys, so before we actually make any circuits, so all these circuits use silicon so i think it'd be a good idea to make silicon seeds so in order to get silicon seeds we need some silicon 
which you can actually get by putting sand in a crusher. So we will actually grab some sand and we can put this in the crusher. There we go. We have our four silicon. Now we should be able to craft our silicon seeds uh, just like so. And then I will go ahead and put this in our farm. All right, guys. So the different materials we're going to need in order to make the different circuits are first gold for the logic so gold will make the logic processor. Then we need diamond for the engineering processor. And finally, we will need nether, pure nether quartz, I believe, to make the engineer or the calculation one. So in order to get this one, it's actually crushed quartz with sand. So that will make a ne uh, nether quartz seed. And then these you actually have to put into the enrichment chamber, uh, which will grow the, the crystals just like so. We will also need redstone for each. Uh, in this case, I'm going to make four of them. All right. So the way this works is, for example, the silicon, uh, silicon press you can put with silicon and you will see it, it's doing its thing. And it should output a silicon or printed silicon. All right. So the next one is the logic press, which you use gold with. This will give us a printed logic circuit. And then the next one is the engineering press, which uses diamond. There we go. And then finally, we got our calculation press, which is going to use our pure nether quartz crystal. All right. So now we have all of these. So in order to actually combine all these things together, uh, you need to put printed silicon either on top or bottom. Uh, then the, the logic or engineering or calculation circuit on the other opposite one. And in the middle, put some redstone. And that should combine them. And there we go. We have our first logic processor. And there is an achievement for that. The same thing with all the other ones. Like, for example, the engineering one. This will give us an engineering processor. And then we can do the same with the printed calculation circuits and we should have a calculation circuit or processor there we go a calculation processor so i'm actually going to take this calculation processor and uh, make something that's going to help us speed up uh, our machine and that's the acceleration card in order to make this you need a calculation processor just like so this will make two advanced cards which then you can use with pure crystals never mind with fluix crystals and if you place them just like so, you'll get acceleration cards. In this case, we can make two. And putting this in here will speed up the machine. All right, guys. So the next things we need to craft are first the energy acceptor uh, because it does use different type of power. So we will need one of these, which requires quartz glass. So we craft that real quick. And then we should be able to craft the energy acceptor. This will give us power. For now, we will place this here. Um, it's, it has a flux duct underneath or a flux duct underneath so this should give it power after that we will need uh, some way to store items so we will make this emmy drive which uses two engineering processors and some emmy glass cables so we'll need some cables uh, which is made with quartz fiber just like so and then from there you, you take the quartz fiber with some fluix crystals and that will make some cable all right, now that we have the cable, we should be able to craft this ME drive, uh, which is where we can store all our different disks that can store items. We will then need a way to access it. Uh, so the way you usually access it is with an ME terminal, which requires an illuminated panel, uh, which is made like so. All right, so this will give us three illuminated panels, which is really nice. From there, we will need a formation core and an an annihilation core. So to make these, you need a logic processor for each. All right, so clicking move items should make that. And then finally, we'll need the other one as well, which uses a mineral chunk. And finally, we need one more logic processor, and that should give us an ME terminal. So I will show you this one first. All right, we will connect this here. We'll connect this up like that. And we will actually, for the moment, connect this ME drive behind it just like so. So there's actually no storage in here. So we will need to make a storage drive. All right. So they're actually called storage cells. 
But something to note is that you can make different sizes. So 1K means uh, you can store a thousand bytes where I think items are, I believe, one byte each. I could be wrong there. But as you can see, you can upgrade them uh, to 64 is what the usual is. But I think that you can go even further uh, with some extra add-ons here that they've added to the mod. But we will make the 1K because it's the most simple one. We will need a 1K ME storage component and just flux crystals around a logic processor. All right, so there is our 1K ME storage component. From there, we can just go ahead and craft this storage cell, hoping I have the quartz glass. We do not. All right, now we should have everything. And there we go. We got a 1K ME storage cell, which then we can put this inside of our drive. Now we have storage to store things. And if we put this ME terminal, we can actually look into our storage system. So if we were to place things there, as, as you can see, we can uh, view them from here. And they should be taking space in our storage cell. As you can see, there's two different types and you can see how many bytes are being used. All right, however, something this is lacking is somewhere to craft stuff. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this one because I don't want it, uh, I don't, like just looking at the system i like to also be able to craft so that's where the emmy crafting terminal comes into play it uses the emmy terminal uh with a calculation processor and a crafting table so after making crafting table i should be able to make this emmy crafting terminal which then if i place this again like how i set the other one as you can see i can still look into the storage i can see the different items but I can also take them and craft, kind of how we had with our previous storage one. All right, guys, the final thing I want to make to to round off the basic applied energistics stuff is this energy cell. So really easy crafting recipe, as you can see there, quartz glass, flux, crisp, uh, flux dust, and the pure nether quartz. And the reason I'm making this is kind of as a store uh, as a power buffer. So if the power goes out uh, and the cable below. Just my system will shut down. I can't access anything. So what this is going to do is I'm going to move this down one. And set it there. And if I put this energy cell above it, this is kind of is going to act as a buffer. So this will fill up with power. And if the power goes off, then it'll run off of the power off this energy cell, which should be enough to basically hopefully like get the power working back or get the power working again or something. Uh, but yeah, I'll still have access to my items for a little bit longer. All right, guys, I think that's going to round off this episode. Uh, we did everything inside of the advancements for Applied Energistics. As you can see, we got every single thing we needed here, uh, which is great. That is not even close to the amount of things you can do with Applied Energistics. Uh, in terms of automating, it is a whole lot better than the simple storage networks and using like, for example, uh, these packagers and uh, automating stuff. Uh, we will, throughout the episodes, first we, we will probably integrate it with what we already have. Uh, so you can also integrate it with all, with external storage as you can with as you can with this one. So that's something I will be doing in the coming episodes as well as setting up automation for a bunch of things. So this one has a great system for auto crafting as well as processing using machines. Uh, so those are all things I'll probably do in the coming episodes, but in terms of getting our system up and running, it is fully functional at this point. You can actually store items in here, uh, no problem. You can use items, you can craft using items. Uh, it's just not connected with the rest of our base yet. But like I said, we will do that in the coming episodes. But that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a lot of fun to make. Uh, if you guys liked it, make sure to like, make sure to comment also on the video, and make sure to subscribe. Get us to 500 subscribers. That's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed, and see you guys in the next episode. See ya.